Amidst a shattered city beneath a blood-red moon, destruction reigns as flames devour the buildings. Our protagonist, battered and wounded, stands beneath the ominous sky, a stark reminder of the fierce battle that has just unfolded. Amid the crumbling ruins, a towering beast emerges, its colossal form shattering buildings as it rises. The creature lets out a terrifying roar, its glowing eyes locked on the helpless crowd below. A horde of masked enemies charges forward, while terrified civilians flee, screaming for help. On a nearby rooftop, the protagonist, injured and exhausted, faces two new challengers. One of them kicks him, sending him to the ground. Already severely wounded, the protagonist is drenched in a strange green liquid as he lies helpless. His betrayers, standing above him, mock him with cruel smiles, casually declaring they'll see him in the next life while stripping him of all his belongings. One holds up a mysterious glowing item, claiming it greedily. With a pained expression, the protagonist mutters a name, Zio Yun, as his vision fades. A fearsome beast materializes above the antagonist, fueled by the stolen power, and the air crackles with energy. The villain, grinning wickedly, reveals that Zio Yun's sacrifice was essential for this dark ritual, leaving the protagonist in shocked disbelief. As the colossal beast Jun, blessed with the power of the gods, roars into battle, hope briefly flickers among the survivors. However, the villain unleashes devastating flames upon the protagonist, laughing maniacally as the fire threatens to consume everything in its path. The two titanic forces collide in a cataclysmic clash, Jun's chains glowing red as they strike the monstrous opponent. Shockwaves ripple through the crumbling city, the ground trembling beneath their power. In a massive explosion, the city is engulfed in flames, and the fallen protagonist is consumed. In his final moments, as the fire devours him, he vows that if given another chance, he would never make the same mistakes again. With fierce resolve, the protagonist's eyes blaze with fire as he refuses to let go, declaring a new beginning. Flames swirl around him, and his heart beats once more, signaling a powerful resurgence. The protagonist awakens with a start, his eyes still reflecting the fire's power. But he finds himself in an unfamiliar room, confused and shaken. He notices that his body is completely healed, with no visible wounds or traces of fire, leaving him questioning the reality of his situation. Shocked by recent events, he wonders if the mysterious voice he heard was real. Glancing at his phone, he realizes that he's been sent back in time, three days before the apocalypse begins. He stares into the mirror, questioning if everything has truly reset. As he examines his reflection, he notices his right eye glowing with a pale gold hue, realizing it may be connected to the fire that consumed him before his death. Stepping out into the bright daylight, his resolve firm, the protagonist prepares for what lies ahead. Gazing at the bustling streets, he reflects on how everything around him will be destroyed in just three days. He knows the impending apocalypse will turn humans into zombies and bring forth strange gods. As he walks, his mind returns to the sting of betrayal by his girlfriend, Ruolan, and his best friend, Shijun, who abandoned him without hesitation. When his phone rings and Ruolan's name appears, the protagonist smirks, answering the call with calm confidence. He recalls how he used to anxiously appease her whenever she threatened to break up, but this time, everything feels different. With a calm but firm tone, he simply says, Sure, before dropping the bombshell that he wants to break up. Smiling confidently, he tells Ruolan he's done serving her and bids her farewell without a second thought. With a newfound sense of peace, the protagonist slides his phone into his pocket and strides confidently through the busy streets. Determined, he reminds himself to handle the important business before anything else. At Ruolan's home, she angrily slams her phone down, furious that the protagonist hung up on her and blocked her number. As she vents to her lover, she briefly wonders if her betrayal has been discovered, but quickly dismisses the thought, convinced the protagonist is too oblivious to figure it out. Her lover tries to calm her, 
mentioning that his father has asked him to collect some powerful family heirlooms, hinting that something big is on the horizon. As they discuss the heirlooms, Ruolan reveals that one of the family tokens is with Xia Yan's sister, and she plans to manipulate Xia Yan to retrieve it when the time is right. Her lover agrees with the plan, dismissing any further concerns as they relax together. Meanwhile, the family token, an ancient artifact, remains in their possession, radiating a mysterious energy. Yan wonders why her brother suddenly made the urgent trip to see her, noting the distance he traveled by taxi. As she looks into his eyes, she notices something strange, but Xia Yan reassures her, asking if she trusts him while hiding the truth behind his glowing eye. Yun smiles brightly and tells her brother that she trusts him completely, reminding him of the strong bond they've always shared and how they've relied on each other for support. She believes everything he does is for her benefit. Xia Yan instructs her to go to school, pack her belongings, and return home immediately. She agrees without hesitation. As Yun heads off, she casually mentions that she'll see her brother in two hours, expecting him not to ask why. Turning back with a bright smile, she reassures him once again, Brother, I trust you. As Yun walks away, Xia Yan resolves to ensure her survival this time, vowing to protect her at all costs. Clenching the ancient family token in his hand, he braces for the challenges ahead, determined to change their fate. Examining the mysterious token, Xia Yan wonders if something about it has changed. His glowing eyes reflect the power within, and he senses a new potential stirring inside. Suddenly, Xia Yan is engulfed by a powerful surge of energy as the token in his hand ignites with flames. The token reveals its true nature, inscribed with the words, The Six Great Hells, radiating immense power and leaving Xia Yan stunned. In an instant, Xia Yan is pulled into a vortex of energy, spiraling uncontrollably as he is transported to an unknown, ominous realm. Dark chains and towering structures fill the landscape, signaling the terrifying power of the sixth great hell he has now entered. As Xia Yan is hurled through the strange dimension, he realizes with shock that the realm is filled with terrifying monsters and demons. The towering structure before him, teeming with dark creatures, confirms Jia Yan's worst fears as he descends deeper into the abyss. As he confronts the terrifying monsters, their red eyes glow menacingly as they charge at him. Overwhelmed by the horrific sights, he can't help but feel fear, realizing just how real and dangerous this hellish dimension truly is. A fierce storm of purple lightning rages above, striking down the monstrous foes with immense power. The sky crackles with energy, and a figure stands before an ancient structure, bathed in the ominous glow of the storm and surrounded by chains of energy. Xia Yan is shocked to see that the powerful lightning is actually suppressing the monsters within the tower. Amid the chaos, a sinister figure emerges taunting him with a chilling smile, mocking his fear as the storm continues to rage. Stunned, Xia Yan demands to know who she is. She reveals herself as Su Daji, the warden of Hell's prison, radiating an aura of immense power and authority. Thousands of years ago, she explains, the immortal emperor and the twelve immortals united to create the demon-suppressing tower. Now known as the Sixth Great Hell, the tower contains unimaginable power and chaos. For centuries, it has imprisoned countless ferocious beasts and sinful gods for their heinous crimes. Trapped within the Sixth Great Hell, these beings are tormented by soul-burning heavenly lightning, day and night, with no hope of escape from their suffering. Su Daji explains that the pardon token in the protagonist's hand is the only key that can unlock the prison doors. She offers to guide him inside, suggesting they check on the prisoners together while she gives him a detailed report on the state of the prison. Xia Yan confidently agrees, gripping the token tightly as he prepares to enter. Together, he and Su Daji step into the glowing purple portal, ready to confront the horrors within. 
Upon entering the prison realm, Xia Yan is immediately engulfed by beams of intense purple and blue energy. As the chaotic forces spiral around them, Su Daji warns him to be cautious, signaling the danger ahead. Tapping into his latent power, Xia Yan's eye begins to glow with fiery energy. Sparks of golden and purple light swirl around him, and Su Daji watches in awe, impressed by the strength he's now displaying. Su Daji reveals that the flame in Xia Yan's eye is the nether fire seed, the very force that allowed him to restart his life after death in the underworld. She explains that their bond, along with the Xia family's deep connection to the six great hells, helped her awaken his power when his despair ignited the fire seed at the moment of his death. Xia Yan realizes that his rebirth has a purpose, to harness his newly awakened powers in the face of the coming apocalypse. With newfound determination, he vows that this time, everything will be different as he prepares to face the challenges ahead. With renewed confidence, Xia Yan commands Su Daji to lead the way through the tower. As they descend, she explains that the six great hells are divided into layers, each more dangerous than the last, requiring increasingly stronger soul power to confront the imprisoned creatures within. Xia Yan is shocked when he recognizes the imprisoned beast before him. It's the same creature Su Jin used in his previous life. The sight stirs memories of past battles, reigniting his resolve for the trials to come. The beast roars ferociously, its red eyes glowing as it unleashes a terrifying scream toward Xia Yan. Wide-eyed, he braces himself, realizing the true power of the creature standing before him. But then, to his surprise, the enormous bear-like creature humorously greets him, recognizing him as the new warden and showering him with compliments. Another figure teases the bear for groveling at the warden's feet, adding a light-hearted moment to the tense atmosphere. The bear humorously attempts to lick Xia Yan, but is promptly told to get lost. Xia Yan reflects on how even thousand-year-old demon kings behave like dogs after being imprisoned for long enough. Just then, a powerful creature questions the warden's authority, dismissing his power as reliant on a mere token and daring the lightning to strike again. As Xia Yan moves forward, he fully realizes the magnitude of the prison, holding legendary creatures like Su Daji and the Black Bear Demon. He gazes at the ominous creature before him, recognizing its towering presence. A sudden realization strikes him. Could this beast be someone he once knew? Or a legendary figure from the past? As Xia Yan approaches, he immediately recognizes Lei Jenzi with a single glance. Su Daji, impressed by Xia Yan's sharp instincts and his ability to effortlessly identify such a powerful entity, praises him. Xia Yan learns about the hierarchy of monsters in the tower, ranging from soldiers to sages and grasps the levels of power he will have to face. Staring up at the ominous structure of the tower, he acknowledges the formidable challenges that lie ahead, understanding that he must grow stronger to overcome the obstacles within. Shayan contemplates the immense power of the general-level beasts on the lower floors, which leaves him wondering about the terror that must be imprisoned on the higher levels. With determination, he vows to conquer them all and become the strongest force in the coming apocalypse. Su Daji then informs Xia Yan that, with his current soul power, this is the farthest he can go within the prison for now. As he exits, resolved to prepare for the apocalypse, he knows he must gather more soul power and abilities. His true hunt will begin in three days, when the gods descend upon the world. Meanwhile, in the city of Old Street Ramos, he walked with purpose. In his previous life, for some unknown reason, someone had tripped over one of the immortal ropes, and as a result, he became a power user in this very place. If, by any chance, he still remembered his past, the treasure should still be here at this exact moment, its energy lingering in the air. His fiery gaze scanned the area, piercing through the hidden layers seeking out the ancient treasures that lay in wait. Our hero stood firm, using that keen fire gaze of his, examining each object before him. 
yet none of them seemed to hold the value they once did. Still, giving up was not an option. He was, after all, the head of the Sun family and father to SX-1. Beside him stood a renowned antique evaluator, a man well-respected in this world. For some reason, the evaluator found his gaze drawn toward our hero, wondering why Shanann was here in this place. In that moment, the evaluator recalled his son. His son had once advised him to choose friends wisely, either real companions or those he could manipulate. He had reassured his father that Sean, a foolish and easily manipulated man, wasn't a threat. The evaluator snapped back to the present, realizing that the memory was just a fleeting moment of the past. He reminded himself that our hero posed no threat, not now, not here. After all, he was just an old evaluator with skills that, while unique, couldn't change the reality that most of the items here were worthless handmade trinkets. Eventually, the evaluator drifted into a deep sleep, and in that sleep, he dreamt of his ancestors. They urged him to seek out powerful secret antiques, objects that would help them survive something monumental looming over the world. Upon waking, he decided to invite Huang, one of the most highly regarded experts, to assist with certain evaluations. Together, they would secure the best equipment. At that moment, the evaluator's eyes flicked toward a particular item among the store's wares. His heart raced as he realized what he had found. With a shout, he declared that he had finally discovered what he had been searching for. As soon as he spotted it, the two began walking in its direction. But before they could reach it, our hero appeared out of nowhere and promptly asked the shopkeeper to wrap it up for him. It seemed like a fair request, but the shopkeeper pointed out that the gourd belonged to Diana Shiming, and because of its historical value, he was asking for a high price, 10000 Though it was indeed a steep price, our hero thought it was far too expensive. He took the gourd in hand, examining it closely. After a thorough inspection, he pointed out a crack in the gourd. He noticed that someone had tied a small string around the crack to conceal the damage. This flaw, he said, should lower the price even more. But still, based on my experience and expertise, this is nowhere near worth 10000 He told the shopkeeper not to fabricate stories out of thin air. This gourd isn't worth 10000 not even in your wildest dreams. At best, it's worth 100 or maybe 100 ons. He suggested the craftsman go pick something off the street because he wouldn't buy it for that price. The shopkeeper, offended, snatched the gourd from our hero and stormed off. As the shopkeeper left, the other old man, who had been watching from the shadows, stepped forward. He asked to examine the gourd more closely, hinting that he might buy it himself. Our hero, unimpressed, told him not to waste time. Take as long as you need, but I've already got what I wanted. Little did the old man know, the small string around the crack was worth more than the gourd itself, even if it hailed from the Ming dynasty. At that moment, he activated his fiery gaze realizing that what he had in his possession was the immortal string, a binding thread that connected various magical treasures. Now that he had secured the most important item he needed in this world, he decided to observe the unfolding events, while also indulging in the spectacle. His mind drifted to the past, to a painful memory of his previous life. His sister had been captured by the Song family. In the end, they had stolen her most precious secrets and used her in a blood sacrifice. But now, this wasn't his previous life. This time, he had the power to change things. He vowed that history would not repeat itself, and he wouldn't allow his sister to suffer that fate again. As he began to imagine how he would deal with the Song family, the scene shifted to them. At this moment, an elder of the Song family remarked that the gourd possessed a powerful spiritual aura and was of great antiquity. Just as the elder was about to discuss the gourd with the man standing before him, our hero appeared from the shadows, addressing the man as uncle's son. The man turned, clearly startled. He hadn't recognized our hero before, but now, with a closer look, the recognition set in. At that moment, he recognized our hero, but his attention quickly shifted to the talisman in our protagonist's hand. He had a clear interest in it and was eager to discuss it, either now or later. However, our hero ignored his question and instead called out for Uncle Song. 
The man was wealthy, and our hero couldn't help but wonder why someone with such riches would be so interested in a mere gourd. Sensing an opportunity, our hero announced to the crowd that the item he was buying was highly valuable. This immediately piqued the interest of the bystanders. They began murmuring that Huang, the most renowned appraiser in the world, had been evaluating the gourd. Surely it was worth more than gold. Suddenly, people rushed forward, eager to join the bidding frenzy. One of them even offered double what the man from the Song family had intended to pay. Realizing this, the Song family man raised his bid to $20,000, but others quickly outbid him, driving the price up to $30,000. The competition was fierce, and the tension in the air grew thick. Annoyed by our hero's manipulations, Song snapped, declaring that the gourd was his, and he wouldn't share it with anyone. The shopkeeper, seeing the rising excitement, seized the moment and raised the price to $100,000, proclaiming that whoever paid it would own the gourd outright. The stakes had grown high, but Song wasn't backing down. He upped his offer yet again, determined to claim the prize. At this moment, we see Sun hesitant to stay behind, but determined to make an extravagant offer. He ends up spending far more than he should have. What started as a gourd, priced at just 10000 had now skyrocketed to over 50000 And all of this could be traced back to Zian's clever instigation. Zian, meanwhile, was quietly pondering whether Uncle Song was truly curious about his family heirloom, whether he genuinely wanted to know how to obtain it. Approaching Uncle Song, Zian teased the idea further, expressing his curiosity as to whether the heirloom really held the ancient touch of his family's legacy. He challenged Uncle Song to reveal it and prove its existence. Intrigued, Uncle Song complied, revealing the heirloom to both Zian and the old man. Their eyes lit up with interest as they realized the treasure was indeed authentic. The old man, captivated, asked Zian if he could examine it more closely. Zian, however, flatly refused. Of course not, he said. This belongs to my family. Why would I let mere people like you handle something so precious? In a bid to appeal to Zian's emotions, Uncle Song played a different card. He reminded Zian that he was his son's best friend and suggested that surely, for the sake of their bond, Zian could allow him to take a closer look at the family treasure. And that's the end of the video. See you in the next chapter.